Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy 26, <coughs> verse 17. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. Yeah as he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made, in praise, and in name, and in honor, and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. Father, we thank you for our great nation. Would to God it be great uh, as it used to be once again. Lord, we pray uh, as we look into the Word this morning, you remind us of some things, not only as Christians, but as Americans, and help us to realize some of the things we've lost by drifting away from you in our nation. Help us, God, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. He said in verse 17, he said, you've avouched the Lord to yourself today, and in verse 18, the Lord has avouched you to him. Avouched means affirmed or guaranteed, something along that line. And so he said, and I, I know he's talking to Israel, okay? I know the doctrinal lessons here, but I'm applying it to us here in America. There's only been two nations ever in the history of the world that God had anything to do with, and one was Israel and the second was America. And if you don't know that, you don't know the history of this nation, which uh, the every school kid today does not know because they've been taught well, I got disgusted yesterday, Friday. We were in a, we, I had to get something done in the car. We were in the service, uh, the, the car place, and waiting in the waiting room. They had the TV going. And in it, in it, some one why they got TVs everywhere these days, every restaurant, everywhere else. Do you ever wonder why they did that just before they brought out the new type television? Big Brother's watching you, whether you know it or not, wherever you are. Amen. But anyway, that's another story. We're not getting all that technology. <coughs> Uh, this morning. But anyway, uh, they were, I don't know what they were advertising, something that had uh, a caricature of George Washington and two other nuts up there. And uh, he was disco dancing, all that kind of stuff. And I pointed that to my wife. I said, Look how they degraced George Washington to follow our country. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. 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 It disgusted me that they would do that. Yeah. And of course, uh, they've rewritten the history books to make him out of all kind of stuff that he wasn't. So he, he says, uh, you have asked the Lord to you. That's what you've done if you're saved. And he's about you to him. And uh, I'm going to apply that on a national level because it says in verse 19, and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made. In the history of our nation, we have been above all nations and we're above all nations for a long, long time until we started to quit winning wars. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, Korea or the up until then, nobody could whip us. And uh, it was because God was on our side. He said, uh, I've, uh, I've made you higher than all the nations in praise. More praise of God has come out of this country in the last 200 years than all the rest of the countries on the planet put together. Amen. And in name, uh, the United States is responsible for the missionary efforts around the world. I know England started the missionary thing back in the late 1600s when they sent uh, uh, William Carey over to India, the first, uh, first uh, foreign missionary. But we've carried the ball since the 1700s. Uh, in praise, in name, and in honor. Uh, as far as I know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, the, the currency of the United States is the only currency that says in God we trust. And the other nation, I don't know who does that. He says in honor. And that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. Uh, on a national radio talk show, the host was, uh, he claimed to be an agnostic. He was 
talking to a call-in listener, and he, he asked him this question. He said, quote, that is a Christian called in. He said, why do Christians think they had anything special to do with the founding of this country? Anybody who reads history books knows that Christianity was no more involved in America's founding than any other religion, end quote. He's reading wrong history books. Right. He's reading updated history books that have been changed and perverted yeah. to change the thinking of our young people. And that's been going on since the 1950s, history books being rewritten. But that's the prevalent uh, thought in America today that this was never uh, founded on Christian principles, on the Word of God, or anything like that. It had nothing really to do with it. And I know you go back in history, you find all kind of reprobates in any time frame you want to get into and uh, all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't change the facts of the way and, and the reasons this nation was founded. It doesn't change that at all. Uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, this country had never has been Christian, but the truth is America as a nation was shaped by the principles of this book. It was founded on the principles of the Word of God. The Christian ethic is found throughout this nation and throughout its history. Everywhere you go, you find evidence of God being involved. Uh, we were a biblical nation from our roots. Amen. But are we a Christian nation? Well, if you're going to answer that question, you've got to define what, what the question means. If, if being a Christian nation means everybody uh, in the nation is a Christian, then no, we're not a Christian nation. We're far from it. But if it means that Christianity was the religion of the overwhelming majority uh, of what, who founded this nation, then yes, it was founded as a Christian nation. And if Christianity's influence is found throughout this nation and its history and its documents, then yes, we were founded as a Christian nation. And it's, it's so evident only a fool would deny that it's there. Amen. Only a fool. Give you some examples, just a few. The legislature of New York. Would you say New York is a liberal state or a conservative state? Liberal. liberal. The legislature of New York declared in 1838, quote, and by the way, this is just going to be a little, a little history lesson this morning, okay? Can you bear with that? Yeah. Quote, 1838 New York. This is a Christian nation. 99 hundredths, if not a larger proportion, of our whole population believe in the general doctrines of the Christian religion. In a quote. The Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, 1892, uh, he declared that in the court's opinion, quote, the United States is a Christian nation. That court wouldn't say that today. 28th President uh, Woodrow Wilson, he gave a famous uh, speech called The Bible in Progress, and he said in that speech, quote, America was born a Christian nation. America was born to exemplify that devotion to the elements of righteousness which are derived from the revelations of Holy Scripture. Yeah, he said we were founded to uh, exemplify the elements of righteousness found in the Bible. Woodrow Wilson, early, early 20th century. Now, this is July 4th morning. Let's look at uh, Christianity's influence on America. Three, three time frames. First of all, we'll look at America's beginning. It's uh, safe to say that Christianity was involved in practically every aspect of our nation's beginnings. Uh, Christopher Columbus, I know, I know he was a Roman Catholic. Apparently he, was, uh, he believed the things he was taught, not like a lot of them. But uh, he had a company of Franciscan monks on one of his little boats when he came over here. But here's what he said in 1504, years after his voyages. He gave his reason for a setting forth to discover new land. He said, quote, I was led of the Holy Spirit to carry the message of the gospel to undiscovered lands. End of quote. That's the first boat that came over here. Amen. To settle. Yeah. I realize the Vikings were over here in 1000 AD and all that. Uh, the purpose of the pilgrims in coming to America <coughs> was to discover to establish a political commonwealth governed by biblical standards. Oh, yeah. That was their purpose. In the Mayflower Compact, they stated, quote, that they had come for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. They did not come here to find fields to plow to plant their crops. They could find all that over there where they came from. They came to find freedom to worship God. Yeah. That was their purpose. Yeah. The Puritans, because of the vaccine state of the Church of England over there at that time, they sailed to America and gave their stated purpose of showing how a nation could prosper if its citizens lived under the laws of God. Amen. 
If you look up American law, you'll see that they said it, it came from uh, English common law. Our laws are based on English common law. English common law is based on the scriptures. Right. Yeah. So why, why don't they say that? Anything but say we had anything to do with God in this country was found. Right. Amen. The Plymouth Charter says that the Plymouth Colony was established, quote, to advance the enlargement of the Christian religion to the glory of God Almighty. In a quote. The Delaware Charter, these, some of these places are very liberal today. Plymouth, Rhode Island. The Delaware Charter uh, gave the purpose of their colony, quote, to further propagate the Holy Gospel. The Virginia Charter, uh, in the Charter, they gave assurance for the right of the people to live in what they call Christian peace, and it instructed the people in that charter, quote, to propagate the Christian religion to such people who yet live in ignorance of the true knowledge and worship of God. In the quote. Amen. They're talking about evangelizing the Indians. Yes, sir. The Rhode Island Compact, quote, we submit our persons, lives, and estates unto our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. You don't tell me this country wasn't founded on Christian principles? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. July 4, 1776, the Continental Congress signed the Declaration of Independence and the Declaration of States, our belief in God the Creator. And before signing, before they allowed anybody to sign, they called, uh, they called all the signers to prayer and fasting to the God of the Bible. Amen. The role of the church, the Christian church and pastors has been very prominent in America's family. A Baptist preacher by the name of Francis Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance in 1892. Now it's been altered some since then. The words in God were added and different things along the way. But he wrote the original Declaration of Independence. And I, I, it just never ceases to amaze me. I was doing some research on this and, and found some, uh, some uh, website that tried to make uh, something occultic out of the Pledge of Allegiance. And said it was the basis for Nazism. Hmm. God help the idiots in this country. Amen. God help us all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That was a Baptist preacher. Another Baptist preacher, Samuel Smith, wrote the hymn that you sung a few minutes ago uh, because he wanted to write a patriotic hymn. It's uh, My Country, Tis of Thee, wrote it in 1831. It was first performed in public July 4th, 1831 at an Independence Day celebration at Park Street Church in Boston. John Leland, a Baptist preacher, was responsible for including the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. There were people that didn't want it in there. He was responsible for that, and he wrote the introduction to the First Amendment to the Constitution and refused to give his support to the Continental Congress if he wasn't allowed to do that, and he had such influence, they allowed it. I'm talking about a Baptist preacher. Amen. Your Constitution is based on the thoughts of a Baptist preacher. Amen. And yet, uh, the First Amendment means nothing anymore. Yeah. And neither does the Second. Before the Civil War, 90% of all America's colleges, college presidents were preachers of the gospel. 90%. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, uh, Brown, uh, Dartmouth, William and Mary, Columbia, they were all founded by Christian preachers and under the influence of Christian churches in their founding. Now, you go to any one of them today, you say there's never been another Christian on this campus. But that's the way they were founded, and they all gave the, the uh, expressed intent of their founding of those schools to train young people in the gospel of Christ. Amen. John Harvard, he was a preacher, a pastor of Charleston, uh, Charlestown, Massachusetts. Uh, Harvard University is named after him, and he stated the purpose of the university was, quote, that every student be plainly instructed and earnestly pressed to consider well, consider well the main ends of his life and studies, and they are to know God and Jesus Christ, which is eternal life, and therefore to lay Christ in the bottom as the foundation of all knowledge and learning, and see that the Lord only giveth wisdom, and to let everyone seriously set himself by prayer and secret to seek Christ Jesus as Lord and Master. End of quote. Amen. Amen. That's the founding statement of Harvard University. Amen. And by the way, their, their motto, which they've got a different one today, but the original one can, can still be seen and still used, it has Latin on that, on that seal that says, uh, translates to truth for Christ in the church. Amen. What do they turn out today? Infidels. Amen. Godless infidels. Amen. Hello.
Columbia University uh, stated that it was founded, quote, uh, for the chief things that are aimed in this college are to teach and gauge the children to know God and Jesus Christ and to love and serve Him in all sobriety. End of quote. Columbia University. America's first school book was, uh, was called the New England Primer. It has the Lord's Prayer on the cover, and it taught the alphabet in, in theological verse. It went like this, for example, A, in Adam, in Adam's fall, we sin all. B, it's heaven to find the Bible's mind. C, Christ crucified for sinners died. It goes all the way through the alphabet like that. The first textbook of an American school. And you say God had nothing to do with our founding? <laughs> A lot of people associate the symbolism on the back of Donald Bill with, uh, with Freemasonry and their cult, and some of that may be true, and it sure looks like it in a lot of cases. But both uh, Franklin and Washington said that God was behind the founding of the United States. Franklin said that. He was a deist. He was not a Christian. That God was behind it. Uh, Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and a statesman named Charles Thompson, they spent four years designing the Great Seal, the back in front of the Great Seal on the back of your dollar bill. And the Latin uh, words under the pyramid in the Great Seal, they mean New World Order. And of course, everybody takes that to be uh, a Freemason and a cultic and Illuminati and all that kind of stuff. But the man that designed that was Charles Thompson. And here's what he said about that, uh, that statement. He was the one who that Latin, those Latin words put on there. And he said that he proposed the phrase to signify the beginning of what, uh, of, to signify the beginning of the new American era, uh, which of course got established in the so-called New World. So this is the New World Order in the Western Hemisphere. And he said, he said that the New American Era began in 1776 with the signing of the Declaration of Independence. That's what the man who put the words on there said it meant, regardless of what uh, uh, Freemasons say that it means. I'd rather stick to God influence. Myself. I know there's stuff on the dollar bill that you can find in occultism, you know, like the pyramid, the eye, and all that business. I understand all that, but the man who put those words on there said, here's why he put them on there. Uh, and since 1865, the words of God that we trust is on our currency, and it's in bold print in the center of the back of your dollar bill, in spite of uh, Madame Murray O'Hara and her attempts to get it off. So the influence of God on our founding fathers and our nation is so evident that anybody with an open mind that use history, you can't miss it. There's no way they can miss it. Uh, I've got here, and I'm not going to take time to read them, but all 50 state constitutions mention God as overseeing their state. All 50 of them. I'll just read a few, for example. Alabama, 1901 preamble. We, the people of the state of Alabama, invoking the favor and guidance of Almighty God, do obtain and establish the following constitution. Amen. Alaska, as late as 1956, when they became a state. We, the people of Alaska, grateful to God and to those who founded our nation and pioneered this great land. Arizona, 1911. We, the people of the state of Arizona, grateful to Almighty God for our liberties to ordain this Constitution. Amen. Arkansas, 1874. We, the people of the state of Arkansas, grateful to Almighty God for the privilege of choosing our own form of government. Amen. Amen. California, as liberal as they are, 1879, we the people of the state of California, grateful to Almighty God for our freedom. Amen. All of them, all 50 of them, I got them every one. Florida, 1845, we the people of the state of Florida, grateful to Almighty God for our constitutional liberty, established this constitution. It goes on down, they, they use different terminology, but they're all thanking God um, uh, all the way through here. Let's see if we can find some of stand out from others. Some of them get really, really down to brass tacks on it. Anyway, they all acknowledge God, all 50 of them, uh, acknowledge Him as, as being responsible for their freedom, Amen. and their, them being able to establish their own government, their own state, and worship God. In fact, one of them brings that out, the, the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our heart. And uh, they all, but they all say something about God. South Dakota, 1889, we the people of South Dakota are grateful to Almighty God for our civil and religious liberties established this okay. Constitution. Tennessee, 1796, uh, that all men have a natural and indefeasible, uh, means not capable of being an old, right to worship Almighty God according to the dictates of their conscience. Uh, Tennessee, 
so he said, said that one. So they all go through and acknowledge God. And um, if maybe these acknowledgments of God from all 50 states ought to cause us to realize the ACLU and the and out of control court system in our country don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. 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 William Penn said, quote, those people who, who will not be governed by God will be ruled by tyrants. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, cool. It's American day. We're being ruled by tyrants. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 We're doing stuff in Washington. You've got no right. control over nothing. Can't say one word about it. Right. They're circumventing the lawmakers, Congress and Senate, making their own laws. Right. That uh, atheist uh, website I ran across that uh, I mentioned to you, <laughs> they're rear breathing. They put a page on their state constitutions that discriminate against atheists. I thought that was pretty good. Arkansas State Constitution, Article 19, Section 1, under miscellaneous provision, says, quote, No person who denies the being of a God shall hold any office in the civil departments of this state, nor be competent to testify as a witness in any court. Amen. 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 <laughs> Maryland's Declaration of Rights, Article 36, quote, that it is the duty of every man to worship God in such yes. manner as he thinks most acceptable to God. All persons are equally entitled to protection in their religious liberty. Therefore, no person ought by any law to be molested in any person or state on account of his religious persuasion or profession or for his uh, religious practice unless under the color of religion he shall disturb the good order, peace, or safety of the state or shall infringe the laws of morality or injure others in their natural, civil, our religious rights, nor ought any person to be compelled to frequent or maintain or, or contribute unless on contract to maintain any place of worship, I don't read this fast, I'm not getting it, or any ministry, nor shall any person otherwise uh, competent be deemed incompetent as a witness or juror on account of his religious belief, provided he believes in the existence of God. Amen. Amen. And that under God's dispensation, such person will be held morally accountable for his acts and be rewarded or punished, therefore, either in this world or in the world to come, in the court. Amen. You know why they didn't want atheists on the way to stand in court? Because they, they, they knew an atheist wouldn't feel like he was going to be punished if he sat there and lied. That's what they just said. If he doesn't believe in God, he can't be a witness. Amen. Article 37 of Miracle, Maryland's Declaration that no religious test ought ever be required as a qualification for any office of profit or trust in this state other than a declaration of belief in the existence of God. Amen. Massachusetts State Constitution, Article 3. Well, Massachusetts has come a long way, has it not? It says, quote, Every denomination of Christians demeaning themselves peaceably and as good subjects of the commonwealth shall be equally under the protection of the law and no subordination of any sect, S-E-C-T, a religious order, or denomination to another shall ever be established by law. So apparently uh, non-Christians are not equally under the protection of the law in Massachusetts. Mississippi State Constitution, Article 14, General Provision, Section 265, I gave you the information because you can pull up the Constitution look it up for yourself if you want to. Quote, no person who denies the existence of the Supreme Being shall hold any office in this state. Amen. 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 Run, Amen. run the infidels out of office. Amen. Amen. Impeach him, everyone. North Carolina State Constitution, Article 6, Section 8, quote, disqualifications of office. The fallen person shall be disqualified from office. First, any person who shall deny the being of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Pennsylvania State Constitution, quote, No person who acknowledges the being of a God and a future state of rewards and punishment shall, on account of his religious statements, be disqualified to hold any office or place of trust or profit under this commonwealth. You believe in God, they can't say you can't hold office. A South Carolina State Constitution, quote, No person who denies the existence of the supreme being shall hold any office under this constitution. And in section 5, they give the oath for taking office and the oath ends with, so help me God. Amen. Tennessee State Constitution, quote, no person who denies the being of God or future state of rewards and, and punishment, you know what, they're all about heaven and hell in the future, Amen. shall hold any office in any civil department of this state. Why don't you go down to the county offices tomorrow, the next day, it'll be closed tomorrow, and just go from person to person. You believe in God. You, believe, you might be surprised what you find out. Texas State Constitution, quote, No religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust in this state, 
nor shall any one be excluded from holding office on account of his religious sentiments, provided he acknowledges the existence of a supreme being. Amen. Amen. Quote. We've got some Texans visiting today. Your Constitution says if anybody holds office in your state, they've got to believe in God. Amen. Amen. You see, the influence of God is throughout our nation. Amen. It's in every state in our country. Now, let me just take a few minutes and show you where the denial of God has brought us as a nation. In the present, America in the present, Still a lot of good about America. I still love America. I still aren't going anywhere else. I don't like anybody who's sold the flag on the seat of their rump. I don't like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Making shawls out of the flag and degrading the flag and all that stuff. You know why that's red? Because millions have died for the stamp. A lot of good still left, but it's, uh, it's still the greatest nation on earth. Amen. It's got a lot of problems. A lot to be concerned about things like abortion, gay marriage. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. Uh, the socialist education system, all those kind of things are yeah. destroying our nation. Hey, yes. Sir. Speaking of gay marriage, my sister told my wife and me if somebody lived up the street from her was a lesbian, uh, she and her partner adopted someone. Can you imagine that? Adopting a kid and raising that kind of environment. Sure. And so now her partner got mad at her and left the kid with her. And not, not going to be much hope for that child. Yeah. Not much. No. Well, I don't believe you ought to talk. I believe you ought to kill him. Amen. Why? Amen. That's what Amen. the book says. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You ought to line them up on the wall and say, Will you receive Jesus as your Savior? Yes, I will. No, I won't. And shoot them all. Yeah. Amen. 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 Is this on tape? sometimes. Lord to wake you up. Amen. What can we do? What can we do to make a difference? Let me give you four things real quick and I'll be done. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Very familiar passage. And again, I know, just like Deuteronomy, he's talking to the nation of Israel. Principles still apply. Hey. Learn to live by principle. You don't have to worry about all that stuff. You can figure out what applies to you. Second Chronicles 7, verse 13. God is talking to the nation about their sin and how he's going to punish them. They don't straighten up. And he says, If I, God, shut up heaven that there be no rain. What's he talking about? If I if I bring natural disasters on you. Well, this country's had some in the last couple of decades. Real, national disasters. So well, they didn't shut up heaven. Well, talk to people out west about that. Amen. I mean, uh, just up there in Crestview, three or four years ago, they were rationing water. Tell me when you could run your water or not. He says, if I shut up heaven, then there'd be no rain. If there's no rain, guess what? Everything dies. Amen. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land, send things in to destroy our land. Let me just say this. It doesn't have to be a bug. You read in the Minor Prophets in, in Joel and some other places, God uses locusts to represent enemies coming in and destroying his land. 
If I send the locusts to devour the land, they are devouring our land. Amen. I want to call the uh, the governor of Arizona and salute her. Amen. 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 Right. We were sitting in an automobile place the other day. Uh, it, it showed a news clip of her telling Washington what they could do, and uh, they could do whatever they want to, and she's still going to run her state yeah. and still keep the illegals out of it. Amen. And they can mind their own business. Yeah. Amen. Right. I like her. Amen. <laughs> Did you know uh, Mr. Obama's taking her to the Supreme Court? Isn't that crazy? There's no such thing as sovereign states anymore. That got destroyed in 1865, by the way. The Constitution was destroyed. So Mexican government. Is what? Yeah, yeah, Mexican government. Suing an Arizona governor. You beat that? I said, hey, try to come and arrest me. We'll have our militia at the border to meet you. Uh -huh. So are you for war? When it's a righteous cause. Yes, we sung that a few minutes ago. Did yes. you believe what you were singing? Yes. 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 Amen. It belongs to us. If I shut up heaven, if I command the locusts, or if I, verse 13, go on, send pestilence among my people. Pestilence. That's sickness and disease. Do you realize in the last 30 years, 30 to 40 years, Hospitals and clinics have become as commonplace as gas stations. Yes. Used to be any given town had one hospital. And now they're everywhere. And they, there's so many, they even compete with each other. Pestilence. There's diseases coming on the scene people never heard of. Right. They come up with a flu shot, does no good because a new strain of flu comes on the scene. Right. He said, uh, if I do all this and send pestilence, and then he gives a solution. If my people, which are called by my name, that's us, Christian, we're called by his name, shall, number one, humble themselves. We need to get off our pedestal if we expect God Amen. to protect our country. And pray. Pray for what? Pray for uh, governors and kings, the Bible says in the New Testament, that you can have peace in the city. Amen. And seek my face. Look for God. And turn from their, my people, turn from their wicked ways. There's so much wickedness in professing Christianity today, you can't tell the boss from Satan. They dress like the world, they act like the world, they talk like the world, they think like the world. Amen. They go to church looking like the world. Amen. Turn from their wicked ways. Then God said, hey, I'm going to punish you, I'm going to chase you, I'm going to send problems unless you get on their face and pray, and turn from your sin, and if you'll do that, then will I hear from heaven. Implication? He just ain't listening till we do that. Good. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. God's ear is not heavy that it cannot hear, neither is arm short that it cannot say, but your sins and your iniquities have separated between you and your God, that he will not hear. That's right. Second Testament. Okay, 1 Peter 3, verse 12 says the same thing. His ears are open to the righteous, but they're shut to the wicked. Amen. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. First step, get forgiveness and clean up for God. And thirdly, said, so if you'll do that, I'll heal their land. We've got a sick land. Needs a lot of healing. Amen. All anybody's doing is put band-aids on it. Yeah. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Yeah, it's right here. It's in Chronicle 7. There's the solution. We're gonna, if we're going to ever see America turn back, we must pray. Secondly, we must work within the process. Let them know how you feel. Go ahead. Hey. They're supposed to be representing you. That's right. If enough constituents let them know every once in a while, that it, changes, it does change the vote sometimes. Amen. Let them know. And then thirdly, you must participate. Vote them out. Hey. Amen. Hey. Clean house! Amen. Well, yeah. the electoral vote will kick in, all this stuff, and they'll have a recount, we'll lose it out in. You might, but you ought to do your duty as an American citizen. Right. Right. You realize most countries don't have the freedom we have in that uh, sense. We still got it. If you don't exercise it, we'll lose it. And then we must persevere. Keep hey. it right. Don't give up. Don't put a towel quit because of what the news says. That's why I tell you I don't even listen to you. 
So what are you listening to Friday? Well, I was trapped in the waiting room. What can you do? <laughs> Amen. Psalm 33, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's why he blessed the United States of America uh, in its infancy and young growth because God was, the Lord was their God. And the blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. God chose this country. Say so why? Because Europe had rejected him. He got kicked out of Europe. So a group of people who believe, still believe in God and want to worship God went to find a place where they could worship God. Amen. And they found it. And when England tried to put the ropes on them and, and control everything, which would have lead them to the worship of God because the Church of England controlled religion in England and would have in the colonies, that's when they rebelled and said, we, that, that's not what we came over here for. We came over here to get away from the Church of England. Yeah. That's right. Psalm 9, verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and every nation, all the nations that forget God. That's right. Our country, by and large, has forgotten God. It is headed for hell as a nation. So what can we do? I just told you. I just gave you four things you can do as a child of God to help train them. But it's going to take all the children of God to do that. Yes. And I hope across America, the churches today, and preachers are preaching, hey, that's what we need to do. Amen. Amen. I'm going to quit there. I'm going to have an invitation. We're going to be dismissed in a moment. I invite you all to stay around for lunch. And uh, we're going to come back in here right after, right after lunch. As soon as, as, soon as uh, there's been time to clean up in there, everybody pitch in. Would you pitch in and clean up your own little mess that you make and around here and so forth? And then the overall thing won't take so much time. That way, nobody has to stay in here at 4, 5, 6 o'clock after, after everything has been cleaned up. And, and uh, then we'll come back in here, have another service. If you eat lunch, you've got to come back for the service. That's right. Amen. 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 Right. Oh, boy. I mean, we operate just like the waterfront mission downtown. You will eat our food, you will hear our preaching. <laughs> We'll make an announcement when it uh, looks like everybody's finished eating and the cleanup's in pretty good order. But in the meantime, after you eat, uh, uh, if you're not uh, directly involved in the cleanup and fellowship, what is this? I thought somebody hung a sign up there or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll allow we'll, uh, um, Just fellowship until we get back in there for the service. Let's stand and be dismissed in prayer. I call another dismisses and ask the Lord blessing on the food and this one yes. Yeah. Okay, as soon as we pray, the ladies setting up, everybody's involved there. Go on in there and everybody else stay there and fellowship a few minutes to lay. And you send somebody back in there and let us know when it's ready. Because I'm hungry. Yes. Uh, seniors first, we need to last. Good rule. Good rule. You guys got that? Seniors first. Teenagers last. Amen. 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 Non-seniors and non-teenagers, Sanders in there somewhere. Bring no food and drink in here, please. And uh, parents, take care of your small kids. And there's enough food for everybody. Teenagers, enough food for everybody. You don't have to 